What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk, and today we're going to go over how to install the new firmware update for the DJI Phantom 3. Now we're going to be working with a professional model, but it's also going to apply to both the professional and the advanced model, everything we do here today. So the first thing you want to start off with is having your uh, battery charge for the camera to 100%. Now the minimum required is 50%, but this process does take a long time, and in case anything goes wrong, we want to have that battery power at peak performance. So go ahead and charge it all the way up to 100%, but you're going to need at least 50% on that battery in order to get through, and even then, you're going to feel like you're cutting it close. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to have your micro SD card ready and formatted as either FAT32 or EXFAT. Now if you just uh, if you just bought the micro SD card or you're just pulling it out of the Phantom 3 for the first time today, you should be good to go. But we're going to need a USB uh, drive to get that data on there and actually install it into the remote later. So if you have the Lexar card, Lexar does sell these little micro USB adapters that we can just basically plug the micro SD card in through a USB slot. They're uh, USB 3.0, they're super fast, so they're good for uh, future video transfers later. Now the reason why we're not going to suggest using a micro SD card to just get the firmware onto the Phantom and then worry about the remote later is because they both need to be updated in tandem, otherwise they run the risk of not being able to communicate with one another. So it's really important that we do have some type of micro SD card to USB adapter. And now that we got all that set up, the last thing to do is to go download the latest firmware update. Now for us, that's version 1.18, and we're going to go to dji.com forward slash product forward slash phantom dash 3 forward slash download. Uh, if you want an updated link, check the more information section below this video. It should go right to it. So once we download this video, we're going to get a zip file, and in that zip file, uh, once we unwrap it using uh, WinZip, or I use WinRare, whatever unzipping program you use, uh, we're going to see a few files in there. The one that's really important is the p3x underscore fw underscore uh, version number dot bin. It's a dot bin file, and this is uh, what we're going to drag onto the card. And you should also see a um, how to update the camera PDF. So if you want to print that out and use that to follow along, it's going to be super helpful because that's basically the process we're going to be going through. So once that, file, once that file is in there and it's not in a folder or anything, it's just that dot bin file, uh, we're going to eject it from the computer. And then we're going to take the micro SD card out of the converter and we're going to actually put it into the light bridge system on the left side of the Phantom 3's gimbal. And it's very important that the Phantom 3 is not powered on when you do this. So when you stick the micro SD card on, make sure you're fully powered off. And once the micro SD card is in there, let's put the battery in. And what we're going to do is we're going to power on the unit. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to press the button once and then press the button again. Hold it down for two seconds. You should hear a normal startup sound, followed by this sound. That sound means that the update process has started, and you're going to hear a series of uh, four little buzzy DDD beeps. So it doesn't sound, uh, the instructions will say DDD, but for me it's more like buzz, 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 buzz. Um, so once that starts, you know the firmware process is updating, and if you want a visual indicator on that it's updating, uh, look on the front of the gimbal. There's a red and green flashing light, and your Phantom will also be flashing uh, yellow lights on the back with solid red lights in the front to let you know that the process is going. Now this process is going to take a while, and it's going to take about 25 minutes, and no joke, for me it took about 23 and a half minutes. So feel free to leave the room, let the camera, uh, let the drone do what it has to do, and then you can come back a few minutes later and check on it. Now the way to, to know it's done updating is you'll get a different series of buzzing noises. You'll get a, a buzz with a pause followed by two more buzzes, so D, space, space, D, D, D. And you can also look for that visual indicator on the front of the gimbal. It shouldn't be flashing red or green anymore. It should be just a solid uh, black dot. Now, your lights on the Phantom will continue to flash yellow, and the front lights will continue to stay a solid red. At this point, once you hear that tone and beep and you don't have that solid light anymore, uh, feel free to power off the unit. Now what we can do to confirm that the firmware update has installed correctly is we can take the micro SD card out of the Phantom, put it back in the USB converter, open up the card on the computer, and you'll actually have a text file in there, and if you open up that text file, it should say success or failure. If it says success, you've done everything right, and your Phantom's all up to date. So now that we've successfully installed the new firmware on the Phantom 3, the next task is to get that same firmware on our DJI Phantom 3 remote. And the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to use the same p3x underscore fw underscore v whatever version number bin file we've been using to update the Phantom 3 on the controller. However, we need to get rid of those text documents that uh, got created, that got generated when we had the successful install. So delete those text documents and only leave that dot bin file on there, just like we did when we first plugged it into the Phantom 3. 
Now once that bin file is all by itself, feel free to eject it from the machine, and we're going to take it over to the Phantom 3 controller, and while it's powered off, plug it into the USB port on the back of the unit. To power on the DJI Phantom controller, you're going to press once and then hold it down for two seconds, similar to how we power on the DJI Phantom. So when you power it on initially, it'll have the normal startup beep sound, followed by a red light. Now that red light will turn to blue when it recognizes the firmware update, followed by a series of very loud and repetitive beeps a few times in a row. Now this will only take about two minutes and it'll let out a longer beep followed by one more repetitive tone of beeps to let you know that the firmware has finished updating and the light at this point should turn green. So now that our Phantom 3 controller is successfully updated, we can power it down, and once it's powered down, we'll remove the USB dongle. Now, it should have generated a text document again to let us know that everything was successful and went smoothly. So let's go ahead and plug that USB dongle back into our computer and just make sure that everything went smoothly. So if this is the same microSD card you plan on using in your Phantom 3 when you fly it around, leaving the .bin file in there is actually very beneficial. So since the Phantom will recognize every time it loads up that it has the same firmware that's on the microSD card, it'll also check to make sure that same firmware is installed on the battery. So it doesn't slow up our load up time, and all of our batteries have the latest firmware update as well. So now that we've successfully updated the firmware on the controller and the Phantom 3 and its batteries, it's time to make sure that the Phantom 3 remote is talking to the Phantom 3 to do this, we're going to power up the Phantom 3 remote like we did before, press it once, followed by a two second hold with another press, should load up, and then once that's fully turned on, we can then turn on the Phantom 3 with one press of the battery and hold it again down for two seconds and it should load up, and if you see green lights here, you're good to go. If any of these are red, you might have to repair them, and there's a little hole you can press right here with a pin or an allen key to help resync the remote to the Phantom 3. Also, this is your first time loading up the Phantom 3. There is a piece of foam back here that you might miss because the color blends in really well with the gimbal. And make sure you pull out this lock before your first flight. Otherwise, your gimbal won't work properly and a lot of your footage will be shaky and pretty poor. Anyway, everyone, my name is Mark Hawk. Thanks for watching our firmware update. We have a lot more videos around the Phantom 3 and various other action cameras. Be sure to subscribe, like, and uh, yeah, I'll see you out there.